Hello, my name is Todd Jackson, and I would like to thank you for joining me while I tell you about my trip to Oxford, England, which occurred in September of 2013. Often called the City of Dreaming Spires, Oxford is one of the most famous cities in the world, and in addition to its world-renowned university, has been home for many famous individuals and played key roles throughout England's history. During the English Civil War, King Charles I made the city his capital after London fell to the rebels, and in 1555, Queen Mary I ordered the burning at the stake of an archbishop and two sub-bishops, all Protestants, earning her the infamous moniker, Bloody Mary. I thoroughly enjoyed my time in Oxford, and I cannot wait to tell you about it. So without further delay, let us proceed. Oxford is no stranger to popular culture, for the city has provided the settings for numerous literary works, as well as filming locations for movies and televisions, including Inspector Lewis, Endeavor, Doctor Strange, The Golden Compass, and the Harry Potter film franchise was filmed extensively throughout the city. My trip to Oxford involved cycling and hiking within the city and the surrounding countryside, often with the assistance of experienced local guides. I strongly recommend renting bicycles while visiting Oxford, and there are numerous shops in which to rent bicycles from, and there are also several tourist centers that are excellent sources of information. It is tradition in Oxford to have one's picture taken while standing beneath Hertford College's magnificent bridge of size, which you see here in the center picture. And if you look over my right shoulder in between the red brick building and the beige colored one, you can see an alleyway and that leads to the hardest pub to find in Oxford, the Turf Tavern, where many episodes of Inspector Morse were filmed and several famous people have visited and this is where supposedly, while Bill Clinton was a student at Oxford, where he did not inhale, which became an issue during his first presidential campaign. Looking at the picture in the lower left, you can see a small list of people that have visited there, and the final name merits clarification. Bob Hawke was a Rhodes Scholar in his youth and was Prime Minister of Australia from 1983 until 1991. And for a time, he held a Guinness World Record for drinking the equivalent of two and a half pints of ale in only 11 seconds. Over 30 colleges compose Oxford University, several of which are open for tours, and many people consider the city to be intellectually overwhelming due to the fact that alumni from each college have changed the world in almost every aspect. Hertford College's chapel features a brilliant stained glass window commemorating William Tyndale, an English reformer and New Testament translator whose influence on the English language has been compared to William Shakespeare's. It was Tyndale who translated the Bible from Hebrew and Greek into English, often in hiding, as religious officials of the day declared his actions to be heresy. Tyndale held firm in the belief that the Bible should be translated into the languages of believers, and this notion eventually cost him his life in 1536. But his translations have been used in every single uh, major Bible revision since then, and it has also inspired other translators. In this stained glass portrait of Tyndale, he is holding edited proofs of his translations, and if you look the names surrounding him, those are individuals who are responsible from tra for translating the Bible into other languages. These include Martin Luther, who translated the Bible into German, and John Eliot, who translated the Bible into North American Indian languages. Of the numerous colleges composing Oxford University, I would like to feature a few, including Magdalen College, which is somewhat confusing as it is spelled Magdalen, and that college's alumni includes C.S. Lewis and Oscar Wilde. New College, seen here in the center, their alumni includes two famous actors. One is Hugh Grant, and the other is the actress Kate Beckinsale. Balliol College, 
as alumni includes four British prime ministers, including the current one, uh, um, Boris Johnson, as well as the writer Aldous Huxley. And Christchurch College's famous alumni includes 13 British prime ministers of the 28 educated at Oxford and the famous author Lewis Carroll. Christchurch College also serves as the filming location for several scenes in the Harry Potter movies. The last picture seen here was used as the basis for the dining hall scene for Hogwarts, and many of the portraits adorning the walls are of the prime ministers who were educated at this college. While in Oxford, I absolutely fell in love with three places. First, I found Wittered Tea and Coffee Shop particularly interesting as people from all professions and ages have walked through its doors and they were seeking the item um, very identifiable with English culture, that being tea. Blackwell's Bookshop, founded in 1879, part of which is under Trinity College next door, features several floors of books where one can spend hours each day, to which I readily confess indulging as it was a great way to relax after a long day of cycling or to escape frequent rainstorms. One very interesting photograph showed President Bill Clinton while on a state visit to England, visited his old alma mater and took a trip to Blackwell's bookstore. And in the picture, as everyone was leaving to return to the motorcade, every one of the Secret Service guards had a bag of books purchased there. The last location seen here is highly associated with English culture, that being the neighborhood pub, and the White Horse in particular. Before my trip, I was familiar with the White Horse through watching various television episodes, and every one of my guides informed me that the best fish and chips in the city were to be eaten there, which I had to find out for myself and agree. As mentioned earlier, Oxford is a biking and walking oriented city. And to emphasize this point, I'd like to draw your attention to the photograph on the left here. Many people travel to London via train, which is about an hour's ride for both work and recreation and they leave their bicycles at the station. Bicycle theft is one of the most highly reported crimes in Oxford, and during my stay, sadly, I observed several bicycle chains that had been cut. Many of these stolen bicycles are tossed into the Thames River, and whenever it is dredged, hundreds of bicycles are recovered. Two attractions I highly encourage one to visit are the world-famous Bodleian Library, which offers a variety of tours, including an online virtual tour, very intriguing displays, and it is directly linked with Radcliffe Camera, seen here on the right. The Bodleian Library is at the core of Oxford University and is regarded as one of the finest research institutions in the world. It has existed since the Middle Ages and currently maintains a collection of over 13 million printed items. This is an exclusive non-lending library and is famous for not deviating from this policy, even for a monarch. During his tenure in Oxford, King Charles I desired to check out a book on French history and was steadfastly refused. While exploring the Bodleian Library, I was able to enjoy a special exhibit of books with a middle theme. And as you can see in the middle of the picture here, the, the theme of these books ranged from the Middle Ages all the way to Middle Earth. And it was amazing to see such a large collection of materials that had been wonderfully preserved. Radcliffe Camera here on the right was the brainchild of Dr. John Radcliffe, a former royal physician who in his last will and testament provided for the facilities enjoyed today, and this building currently holds a collection of over 600,000 books. And the only way to visit is through a guided tour. Now, while visiting Oxford, please keep in mind that Radcliffe Camera, colleges, museums, are not only tourist destinations, they're also active research institutions, 
And in many areas, if you see a sign that uh, says hushed tones are appreciated, they greatly appreciate that. The Ashmolean Museum is a world famous center of study, and it was the first museum founded in Britain. Currently, it houses a collection of art and archaeological finds from all over the world. The Ashmolean also features collections both in person and online. And if visiting, admission is free, but bookings are mandatory. One can literally spend hours in this museum due to its vast size and the variety of collections. And while I was there, I was able to indulge my personal historical interest about the Roman Empire and enjoy a large display of coins circulated during the reigns of the 12 Caesars as documented by Suetonius. Parliament has met at the Sheldonian Theater several times throughout its existence, most notably in 1665 after London was evacuated during the plague. This was the first major project of Sir Christopher Wren, who um, has numerous uh, projects throughout England, most notably St. Paul's Cathedral in London. And this was completed in 1669, and the theater has hosted several history-making events. Some of these include the initial public performance of Handel's Athalia, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, in 1733, and where several prominent individuals have graduated, including nearly 30 international leaders, 50 Nobel Prize recipients, 120 Olympic medal winners, and almost 30 British prime ministers. Here, I'd like to showcase one of the most prestigious colleges in Oxford, that being all Souls College, which was commissioned by the Archbishop of Canterbury, whose name was Henry Shishele, to memorialize King Henry V and those soldiers who died fighting in France. During my vacation, I found three very interesting attributes about this particular college. First, the architect is also very familiar to us by now, Sir Christopher Wren. And here he actually was able to autograph his work. If you look at the picture in the center of the spires, uh, you can see, if you look carefully, a W, therefore autographing his project. This college features no undergraduate students as they already hold degrees and are fellows whose job at the college is primarily research and it houses one of the finest wine cellars in the country, supposedly second to that of Queen Elizabeth II. Sadly, that area is off limits to tourists. The college's wine cellar was at the center of a scandal in 2006, as a long-serving butler was questioned by the authorities when 35 bottles valued at well over 2,000 pounds was discovered missing. Here I'd like to point out the chapel in the lower right-hand corner. The detail, I can tell you, was just absolutely amazing. It was very awe-inspiring, as well as the stained glass windows circling the chapel room itself. And if you look in the upper right-hand corner, uh, it took me a while to figure that particular scene out. This is Noah's Ark being constructed. And in the lower left, we can see Samson, and destroying the pillars. Exploring the Oxfordshire countryside is one of the best ways to personally view such beautiful scenery. While cycling through the Cotswolds, which is what they consider an area of natural beauty, it's similar to our national park systems here in the United States. The Cotswolds covers six counties and in one day, my guide and I covered nearly 40 miles on bicycles and passed through several wonderful villages, one of which was Charlbury. And it was dotted with several cottages and ancient looking pubs. 
A couple of days later, my guide and I traveled to, via train to a village called Bladen and then cycled back to Oxford. One of the places we visited was St. Martin's Church, shown here. And this is where I need to include a very humorous remark that my guide told me, and it contrasts the differences between perspectives in England and the United States. And the guide told me that this church was not very old, as it had only been constructed in the 1850s. Inside, there was a large display showing Winston Churchill's funeral, which I found odd until my guide directed me to a small cemetery immediately behind the church where Winston Churchill is buried, along with several other family members. After Churchill's death in 1965, there was strong public demand for him to be buried in Westminster Abbey. But Churchill had specified a couple of years before he died, as his health was declining, that he wished to be buried near where he was born, also close to his parents and his younger brother, who had predeceased him. As mentioned earlier, Oxford has many strong connections to literature, one of which is the classic story, Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, which is one of my favorites. I had always thought that Lewis Carroll was an author by profession, and I discovered while there that I was quite wrong. Graduating from Christ Church College in 1855, Lewis Carroll immediately secured an appointment as a mathematics lecturer, in addition to becoming an ordained deacon within the Church of England. Carroll became acquainted with the daughters of the Dean of Christ Church, including four-year-old Alice Little, and he told them all stories which he was encouraged to write down that became the noted book and its sequel, Through the Looking Glass. Many settings within these stories are based on actual areas within Christ Church College, and the pictures seen here of the Mad Hatter, the White Rabbit, and the Teacup were all taken at a themed pub located nearby called the Perch Pub. Part of my Alice in Wonderland tour featured a rowboat excursion down the Thames River, and this is where all of us in the boat nearly had to swim for shore. If you look in the upper right-hand corner, the gentleman featured there, his name is Alistair, and he guides the Alice's in Wonderland tours there, and he is responsible for the rowboat excursion. Well, if you notice, his back is headed the direction that we are traveling, and the boathouses behind him there belong to various Oxford College's rowing teams, and many times the students will come out there to practice. Alistair was not paying attention, and myself and the other gentleman in the boat had to constantly remind him that a, rowers were coming very quickly and very closely. And we had one particular close call in which we were all very glad to return to shore. The Inklings mentioned earlier included C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. They met and debated at a pub called The Eagle and Child. During my trip, I had the good fortune of being able to enjoy a pint in the nave where this distinguished group met for years. And one particular afternoon while I was enjoying a pint, I was informed by the pub manager that I was actually sitting in Tolkien's seat. This pub has existed since the English Civil War and its reputation is firmly entrenched in both literary and English history. Though, sadly, at the time of the production of this video, the pub is, is closed. The pub is owned by St. John's College, directly across the street, whose alumni include former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, and the, it is reported to be haunted by William Loud, a former Archbishop of Canterbury who was beheaded, and his ghost has been spotted in the library, pictured here, carrying a candle and supposedly, for whatever reason, kicking his severed head. This library is rarely open to the public, and I made sure to take advantage of this opportunity while it was open, and I had to sprint to be sure and obtain a slot before it was declared closed for the day. 
constructed in 1838, nearly 300 years after the event's memorialized took place, Martyrs Memorial is dedicated to the memory of three prominent Protestant figures, Nicholas Radley, Thomas Cranmer, and Hugh Latimer, all of whom were imprisoned for hearsay as Queen Mary wanted England to become a Catholic nation, and all three were burned at the stake for their beliefs. The actual site of the burnings seen here is located a short distance away, uh, directly in front of Balliol College, and the flames were so intense that they actually damaged the doors to the college, and those doors still hang there to this day. The memorial was constructed in response to Catholic ideals being introduced within the Anglican Church, and those responsible for erecting this memorial wanted to remind Oxford citizens of the city's long-held Protestant status. And if one looks carefully at the middle portion of the memorial here, we can see the statues of the individuals who lost their lives. Another of Oxford's literary connections includes the poet Percy Shelley, who enrolled in University College in 1810 but was expelled the following year after publishing an atheistic pamphlet. And he drowned in a boating accident in Italy in 1822. A descendant commissioned the statue seen here in the center, and it was eventually placed in University College, where it remains to this day. Crafted by Edward Onslow Ford out of white marble, it depicts Shelley as he was found when he washed ashore. And well over a century after this memorial was placed, it still mesmerizes and moves visitors, further engraving Shelley's reputation. In conclusion, I cannot say enough about my visit to Oxford, and I would highly encourage anyone who would like to to visit, as there is so much to see and do, much of which is free, the scenery is wonderful, the people are great, and the pub food is some of the best that I've ever experienced. With that in mind, I would like to offer two final pieces of advice for future travelers. And this is to reiterate that the city is geared for bicycling and walking, as parking spaces for vehicles are sparse. And be prepared for English weather, which means taking an umbrella or a poncho as it rains often and showers can quickly materialize. Thank you so much for joining me, and I sincerely hope you enjoyed this presentation.